Hey guys, this is Steve1989 from MREinfo.com and we're going to be checking out components sent to me from a fellow MREinfo member and friend, RulerYak. And what are these? This is part of an extremely elusive and hard to find and come by food packet survival abandoned aircraft. Now, this is an original Natick Food Lab stock photo. And this thing is not easy to get. I've, I've had a couple opportunities to acquire one of these over the years and just passed for some dumb reason. I don't know why I would see them come and go. But I haven't seen one in over a year. So rest assured, next time I see one, well, I'm going to get it and probably donate it to the museum. But if I happen to get duplicates, I can tell you it will be opened here. And thankfully, I actually have each of the components. Dehydrated meat bar, the ready-to-eat cereal style B class 2, and four out of the seven sugar cubes, two out of four coffee instant type 2, the chili powder seasoning. I'm lucky enough to possess that, and a pack of the dehydrated onions. I don't have the P38 can opener with it, but that's not a big deal. It's just a P38. But the best part, the neatest part, is the fruit cake, the cereal bar, and that meat bar dehydrated. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. What we have here are all the components, just less of them, and sadly I won't be able to present the actual opening of the spam cans. That's not a big deal, really. These are very fresh components, considering they are from 1968 to 1969. There is a date code right here on the dehydrated meat bars. November 8th, 1968. There are actual directions for use. Check that out if you want to pause and read that. And I'm going to try out all three methods with this. I mean, it's not going to be a lot because it's just one bar. But I'll take a bite of it just as a bar. I'll brown it and or also do some gruel or soup. I will actually try all three with this. Coffee Instant Type 2. This stuff's not as palatable as Coffee Instant Type 1, which you would think that Instant Type 2 would be the newer one. Instant Type 2 is always from 60s era rations, and it's very acidic. It's a very dull flavor. Check out that fruitcake bar. Mmm. I believe there was an ingredients list on this thing. Ingredients, flour, raisins, candied pineapple, candied cherries, vegetable shortening, sugar, eggs, gluten, salt, artificial flavor. I'm going to eat that thing. Ruler Yak told me he ate one and it was perfect. And this is an, another fascinating item. The original style of ready-to-eat cereal. Now these things were in LRPs. They were in, you know, long-range patrol rations. And then perfected over the years. And now they're in a variation of something like this. The granola bar is in the food packet survival general purpose. But this here, this one looks really good. I'm going to try it out. I've opened up rations in the past with that and it's been dark and rancid and just unbelievable, just totally unedible. This is a nice little sugar cube. Speckles, pure sugar. American Sugar Company, New York, New York. Everything was made in New York, New York back in the day. And it says, we aproviche. I don't know. I'm totally botching that. Oh, quick energy. So yeah, I got four of those. And then here's something neat that you don't see every day. Instant tea with ascorbic acid. Packed by the Nestle company. Mmm. Still feels good. Everything feels like it's, well, I can't really tell with this. But everything else, I am almost certain from the way it feels, the way it looks, that it is still edible. So we're going to try all this out. So without further ado, I'm going to bring a tray out and we're going to see what we got here. All right, special food bars make up the food packet survival abandoned aircraft because this food contains five meat food product bars, an extremely dense, high fat, high caloric content item. It's likened to the Pemmican ration first used by the American Indians and later by Arctic explorers. Modern food science and technology have, however, vastly improved this Pemmican type food over its historic prototypes. This food packet was formerly called the Ration Individual Survival, and for one procurement only, the Food Packet Survival Individual. The austerity of an all-meat bar ration is relieved through the inclusion of a variety of high-carbohydrate foods. The meat bars can be browned or made into gruel by the addition of water, onion powder, and chili seasoning, which are included in the packet. The bars can be eaten without preparation, 
Packaged in two rectangular cans, this food packet provides a total of 3,600 calories. From a physiological standpoint, it's necessary that adequate water be consumed with this food packet. At present, it is included in some Air Force survival kits and is also used in training and indoctrination at the Air Force Survival Training School. And each packet consists of the following components. Meat food product bars, fruitcake bars, cereal bars, onion powder, chili seasoning powder, sugar tablets, instant coffee, instant tea, and a recipe sheet. Now sadly, I don't have that recipe sheet, but that's okay. Because I am going to find one of these things, I can promise you that. So, I mean like, these things are just a high dense, ooh, let's try this out. High dense calorie food. All right, let's check this out first. Hmm, smells all right. Let's try a bite. Hmm. I don't, I'm like taste testing this thing. It's fine. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh gosh, I got a big bite there. Hmm. Still perfectly edible. Oh my gosh, he wasn't kidding when he said this thing was perfect. Oh man, he sounded so excited when he told me about it. He's like, dude, that thing is still perfect. I just ate one. I was like, oh man, you gotta let me try one of these out. And shortly thereafter, sorry for talking my mouthful. This thing is real. This is better than fruitcake that you can buy in the store. But then again, I missed dinner, so. Mm. You gotta get good and hungry before you're willing to eat something like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm chowing down. I'm not even like, I'm not messing around here. All right, so like, let's try this out next. I'm gonna enjoy that last little bit, like, after the shoot here. No, I, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. I can't help myself. I mean, like, it's from 1968. How can I go wrong? Hmm. Okay, while well, I'm eating that. Not bad. Now let's try this out. I really wanna break this down and add some hot water because I mean it says eat dry or crumble in a cup and add hot or cold water one and a half ounce net from Van Brode Milling Company. I've had stuff from them. Can't remember what now. Oh yeah that's right it was an orange flavored cereal bar from like mid 70s. It was great. Mm. Oh gosh that's awesome. Yeah. Oh this is the best when you find something that's like perfectly fresh. Now if I could open this thing all these little like, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Now like, I wanna eat some of it like this. You know what this reminds me of is a, like, anybody ever have a food pack of survival general purpose and they have the cornflake cereal bar? This tastes pretty much just like it. Hmm. Hmm. It tastes like, hmm. Oh yeah, this is a million times better than that RCAF ration I had a few days ago. Oh, that thing was just gnarly. I mean like totally out of this world disgusting. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, I could just eat that whole thing dry. You would definitely need like the QM report I just read off before, right? Water, an adequate amount of water for all this. I mean, like, you wouldn't be able to enjoy anything out of this without some water. Other than maybe, like, the sugar packets, you know. You'd be up the creek without a paddle, so to speak, if you didn't have water with this thing. Or enough of it. It would take a lot of water to assimilate this ration. I'm really excited to see if this meat bar dehydrated is good like the rest of this so far. Now, I'd like to actually break this up, crumble it, and make, like, a little cereal thing. You know, I don't want to blow the thing up and it flies everywhere. Oh, I think I'm able to control this quite well. Okay. I mean, it's kind of brutally, it's designed that way. It's supposed to be this way, you know. So you just add hot water and you make yourself like a cornflake cereal meal. Actually, that's all, because it, let's add a teeny bit of hot water. This is so good right here. Mm. Oh yeah. All right, let's add some hot water. This is great. I mean, like, how often do you get to open up something from 1968 and chow down like it was made yesterday? 
I'm sorry, I'm talking my mouth full, like, as always. Okay, let's add a little water. Like, just a tad. Some. Well, it's just warm water. While we're at it, why don't we stir it up with a little MCI spoon. Old school. They actually had these at the beginning of MREs. I believe they had these up till 1991, believe it or not. So we're just gonna get that kind of stirred up. So two for three so far on fresh fr uh, food items. I mean, I almost didn't believe Ruler Yak when he told me, oh dude, the fruit cake bar is great still. Like, you know, it was perfect and I'm like, Okay, okay, you know, I mean, I know how I can get sometimes like something could be like, you know, not bad I mean, it's not inedible and I'll be like, oh, that's pretty good Like I've done that with some MRE items that I remember when I was a kid or something and I just really was wishing it was the same way, but it just simply wasn't, you know So we'll just kind of get this stirred up All right, look at that That's a beaut. All right, let's try it out the way they intended to be well, you could eat it both ways. I've never had one of these bars like that. It's actually a really nice alternative. Again, if you had water available, this would be good, but it kind of makes a slight mess. Like you see, like, I guess you, if you were in a survival situation, you'd be lapping up a little, every little bit of that with your finger or whatever you got. But I would probably take a bite, like as a bar, you know, maybe even eat the whole thing and then start swigging some water. Cause like this, you might have a calorie or two wasted in mess. Like, see, just all this, like, stray mess, which it's like, I don't want to waste any of this. It's so good. How many are left like this, I wonder? I wonder how many of these still exist in this condition. I wonder how many exist in general, considering I barely ever see them. I know they're rare. They're not as rare as a survival Arctic 3 food packet survival, but right, those you see maybe once every other year. If that, there was probably about a two to four year span. I mean, I've been actively searching for years on rations and that's going to be one of my upcoming videos. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what that looks like real quick. It's one of my upcoming spam can reviews. All right, so like, here's a food packet survival Arctic 3, okay? Look at that. Gives like a nice little reflection, hey. Anyway, look at that thing. And it's beautiful. This one has a scuff. This is the one I'm gonna open, where there's the scuff on gum. And the other one's in mint condition. And this one here is decent. Check that out, man. Great shape. I've seen these in half as good a shape with dents going for a lot of money. Okay, like you could buy four cases of MREs kind of money. And what did I pay for this one? Not that much, but nonetheless, I took diligent finding and I managed to pick up five of them. One went to the museum, one I opened and did a photo set I had a botched one at that and I completely regret it. And I mean, it's not bad. There are some photos of it on Emory Info's forums, but another one I sent to a good friend in Germany. Actually, I gave it hand delivered it to one of my other good friends who's from Germany who took it back and then hand delivered it to him. That was pretty amazing. But this is the food packet survival abandoned aircraft. Very similar, but this was two components. That survival Arctic was just one. And it's just like date cookie bars, apple crisp or something cookie bar, something like that. Those things are real nasty. Some chocolate, which I ate one of those bars. And it just really, I didn't do its justice. It was a beautiful rash and I feel like I wasted one. So anyways, here's a different ration, okay? But I just am kind of giving you an upcoming in the middle of this. And this is really not a you know, official, hey, I'm opening up a ration. These are just some very good shape components. Now, you know, that I thought was worth sharing. They, 
This, since it was already opened from its main container, it needed to be shared. Look at this thing. It is like vacuum sealed in there. I have a good feeling that I mean, it feels a little soft. I think that's normal. I have a great feeling that this is in tip top shape. This is a label that I'm definitely saving. Excuse me, there we go. Get one more look at that. And then, sorry, November 8th, 1968. So how old does that make this meat bar? Is this going to be some of the older meat consumed? I don't know. But we're going to give it a shot. And I'm going to open it here. And then we're going to be taking this out into the kitchen where we can do it up right. Then I'm going to have a tea with it. The coffee I'm going to hold back on maybe. Actually, no. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing up one of each of these two. Got to make it official. I'll save one of the coffees. And you know, of course, sugar is sugar. I'll be adding that to the tea or coffee. Most likely the coffee. Alright, so, hmm. Let's find a slit to open this thing with, alright? Is there anything? Nope. One of my old faithfuls here. There, that should do it. I wonder what happened with this ration. I guess guys reported that it wasn't working for him, you know? Ooh, I don't know. Oh, I just picked up a tone of something. It's just because it's dehydrated, it's hard to pick up any tones of scent. Wait, let me let you get a good look at that. Mmm, dehydrated meat bar. <laughs> dehydrated meat bar. Not bad. Mmm. Yummy. So, like, it feels kind of oily inside the pack. That's normal. Alright, let's just start trying with meat products. You gotta be careful. You just start with a little bit. Work your way. It smells okay. Looks, I guess, okay. <laughs> I mean, like, look at that beauty. Right? Tastes like beef jerky or something. Alright. We're going to go for a, a nice hunk of uh, 1968 goodness. Hmm. Yeah, that's decent. Oh yeah, we're taking this out in the kitchen. All right, it's gonna get grilled up. Wait, let's just do this. Hold on, I am, I am. I'm kind of hungry. Hmm. Oh yeah. I could eat it like this. I almost don't even wanna do all the other stuff. There's like little pieces of fat in there that are kind of hard. But, yeah, I know I gotta cook it, because I want to add some chili powder and onions. Alright, taking it to the kitchen. Alright, now we've got this out in the kitchen, and we've got it on the griddle, lightly oiled, set to 300 degrees, and we're gonna make this palatable by adding some chili powder seasoning and onion powder. It's gonna be nice. Ooh, what am I doing? Mmm, look at that. I think this looks pretty decent, if you ask me. All right, ooh, all right. Maybe 300's a little too high. Let's take it down a little bit. Whoa, I really bursted. There's a lot of it there. This really breaks out to a fair amount of beef and pork and fat. Mmm, I'm gonna add a little oil to the top. Just so this doesn't just crisp up to nothing. Just a teeny bit. There we go. That'll help. I know that was totally like breaking the rules there. This thing's already got enough fat in it, but I don't want it scourging all over the place and 
messing up this griddle potentially. I don't know what this stuff's gonna do. It just looks like ground beef, huh? Oh yeah, old school. Old school fork, doing it right. Came out of a World War II mess kit. All right. This is heating up and looking pretty decent. Oh yeah, look at that. Really nice. All right, we gotta add some of that seasoning in quick before this stuff's already ready. Okay, I wanna get good look at, look at that. Mmm, not bad at all. Okay. Both of these. Let's add a little chili, a little onion. Mmm. Okay. Oh, cool. Look at that. Some onion powder. Let's add a fair amount to that. Now I got a lot left. Because that was like enough for half those meat bars. And this is going to be more than enough. Chili powder for one. Ooh, yeah. Look at the color on that. It's dark. Oh, that was a lot there. Crud. <laughs> okay, we'll mix that in. Otherwise, that's a hot piece of ground beef there. I mean, this just looks like... Well, I, I'll say this right now. This food is better than what I was eating in school back in the day. <laughs> I mean, like... Uh, anyway, sorry. I'm talking about school. Mm, look at that. This kind of reminds me of, like... I don't know. Taco Bell or something. I don't eat there anymore, but I mean it's been a while, but This actually looks a little better than Taco Bell ground beef if Anybody knows anything about that stuff You're better off eating a dehydrated 1968 meat bar That looks decent Mmm, it smells so good now the onions and chili powder just brought it back to life along with heating it up and a little bit of olive oil. <laughs> My little dog Scooter's coming over here. A little Chihuahua. He wants to know what's up. I'll say this. You could certainly do worse. I think this tastes better than a lot of new MREs. I'm not exaggerating. This is really good. I don't know how, but this stuff held up like a champ. This is what fascinates me with a lot of those old survival rations. I mean, other than that RCAF, which was just a strange deal. These things normally hold up quite well. Natick Food Labs, they, they pack this stuff right. Natick Food Labs is the company that was contracted by the military to create all this food for the military. Ha. Hmm. Decent. Can't give any to my little dog, Scooter. Might make him sick. But, me on the other hand, I'll try it out. I got water heating up right now in the old microwave. See here, I let this cool off a little. Let my battery recharge on the camera. Now it's not gonna burn my tongue. Hmm. Sorry about the microwave beep. You get these little gritty pieces that are like hard. I don't like that. But considering it's from 1968, I guess it's not all that bad. Now the last part of this, we have to do the little gruel thing, you know, the soup, however you want to put it. So we're just going to add a little hot water. Again, considering this stuff's age, I'm sorry, I'm like hand on that stuff, shop. Yeah, so we've got that going on right now. All right, so I'm just, Breaking this up with the fork and see how this goes. Let's get a good view of this. Ooh. Ugh. Really appetizing, don't you think? Could certainly be worse at this age. It could be so grotesque. It could be like those beans and meatballs. I mean, it just, we'll add in what we griddled up to. I don't want to waste any of this. I mean, it literally is my dinner and it's three in the morning. I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of tired. I might end up having the, that tea in the morning when it actually makes sense to, to have in the coffee. Then I'll actually be able to get some sleep. I have to wake up several hours 
from now. So we'll just mix that up. Maybe pour off a little of the excess water. I mean, that'd probably make sense. Try out the water. Mm. Oh yeah, this is how you would do it in a survival situation. This is the best way to do it. I mean, it makes sense. If you were able to actually heat up water, that's, again, if you had a heating element, this thing didn't provide any matches. And if your survival vest, I mean, you're a pilot, I can assume you're going to have a pilot survival vest. Most likely you got a pack or two of matches or a fire starter. Again, this was in the late 60s, so Maybe they didn't have a magnesium fire starter back then. I'm not sure if they did or not. What would be probably, what, an SRU-21 survival vest? I'm not sure. Something like that. I mean, they had those little pen flare guns. I have two of those. I should do a video of me shooting a pen flare gun. Those things are rare. They're really hard to get. All right. Pouring off the excess. Mmm. So that's... The soup or the gruel that they also instruct you to be able to do. I say this is your best bet in a survival situation. Eating it dry, you're just swigging the water along with it. So you would be trying to survive off some meat bars and cereal bars and fruit cake. It's really not a bad balance. This is like for if you couldn't catch anything or forage anything, and you're not going to be out there for long before you got some sort of rescue, you know, evac coming in and getting you out of there. Hmm. All right, let's try out this instant tea. See how it's looking. It smells good. Ooh, yeah, this looks perfect. That's how it's looking. And an Italian ration spoon here. These are like the strongest spoons. Sure beats a Lithuanian ration spoon. No offense to Lithuania or anything, but... Let's get this nice and stirred up in some, in some hot water. Sugar cube. Nice. Really kept its shape. It's really hard. I can't even break the thing. Let's see if that'll even... Yeah, it's breaking up quite nicely. There'll be some lightly sweetened hot tea in no time, which is something I could use right about now. That is some perfect instant tea. And what I like about the old instant tea is you have that option to add sugar. You know on MREs now, it's sweet. I think there's like 14 grams of sugar in one of those things. All right, so I just finished that tea and I drank it down to the last drop and I thought in the end was it is incredible that 47 year old instant tea was preserved and in the same exact condition that it was 47 years ago. It didn't degrade whatsoever. Now like everything else in this ration so far had, I can imagine a slight change in its condition, but that tea tasted like fresh instant tea. I was amazed. So let's, let's move on to coffee instant type two. This here seems like it's in just as good a shape as it was when it was packed as well. This ration was stored perfectly. Everything in this ration was amazingly fresh. It was packed well. This coffee's no exception. You see there, it's about as good as it gets right there. Get it nicely mixed up. It looks perfectly fine, so we're we're gonna give it that benefit of the doubt. I'm sure it is. I've had plenty of coffee in some type one and type two. Every time I've had it has a dull acidic flavor to it. Okay. Look at that. Alright. Let's keep it classy. One of these days, I'll find a complete one. All right, food packet survival abandoned aircraft components. Not the complete thing, but next best thing. Now, if you ever find components from a ration, there's a good chance it was opened out of the thing like a good while before, and 90% of the time, those components are not fresh. But in this case, they were. So this was a really unique and interesting look into this ration without having to actually open one, which is, a great opportunity for documentation and still preserving the units that are still out there. So I am going to be keeping my eye out for these, but it will be for donation to the museum and 
not exactly to go and open this just to go and enjoy the same exact components that we did just now. So this was kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Really cool stuff. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you guys have a great day, you know, or evening, whichever is the case. And uh, thanks for subscribing, everybody. You know, you've all been so cool. And you're inspiring me to continue doing this and share these rare, weird, <laughs> unusual, whatever you want to call it, old military rations with all of you. And well, I've got plenty of upcoming videos, so stay tuned. We've got a bunch more coming up. This was just a nice little midweek video, just an extra, really, that I felt was worth sharing with you guys. All right, cool. See ya.